Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariongi and we continue with our topic of discussion, a topic in Form 3 Chemistry, uh, Form 2 Chemistry, sorry, and this is uh, Structure and Bonding. Now, uh, we are going to uh, see the various ways of illustrating uh, ionic bonds and during our last uh, lesson, we saw an example of how to illustrate by use of a dot and cross diagram uh, the structure of uh, sodium chloride. So today, we are going to illustrate formation of magnesium fluoride. So magnesium fluoride is also an ionic compound because magnesium is a metal and therefore it forms a positively charged ion. Fluorine is a non-metal and therefore forms a negatively charged ion. So the attraction between the positive and uh, the negative ion creates an ionic uh, compound uh, which is magnesium fluoride. On the other hand, we can say that magnesium loses electrons while fluorine gains electrons. And that's what leads to the formation of uh, the ionic bond. So in this case, we can say that uh, magnesium, this one has 12 electrons arranged as two eight two and we are saying that it therefore requires to lose two electrons our fluorine this one has nine electrons arranged as 2, 7, 2, 7, and requires to gain one electron. So that's the bottom line, uh, that magnesium with the 12 electrons, that is the arrangement, 2, 8, 2. Uh, for fluorine, nine electrons, the arrangement is two, seven. So for magnesium, is going to lose two electrons, uh, while fluorine is going to gain only one. It has only the capacity to gain one electron. So what will happen here is that the two electrons that are lost by magnesium can only be gained by two fluorine atoms because each fluorine can only take one. So bas basically what we are saying that we need two fluorine atoms to combine with one magnesium atom. So that when magnesium loses the two electrons, each of the fluorine atoms can gain an electron from there. So on this, we'll draw the diagrams for that. Magnesium 12P, 12N, use a different uh, illustration. So that is 282, that is for magnesium. Atom Mg282 so it's important that all these details, we include them. The electron configuration at the bottom. Then we are saying plus fluorine. Fluorine is uh, nine electrons. So it has nine protons and 10 neutrons. So the number of neutrons have no effect here. They just add to the mass of the atom. 
So 2, 7, this is a fluorine atom, F, 2, 7. So we are saying that uh, because magnesium is losing 1, 2, and fluorine can only take one here, so we shall need two fluorine atoms. So here we'll say two to show that these are two fluorine atoms so that when you draw it, now we have magnesium 12P12N after it has lost has lost the two electrons. So now the number of protons are 12 and the electrons are 10. So we have an excess of two protons. So two positive charges. Uh, fluorine, we are saying there are two fluorine atoms. You can either put a two here to show that there are two or you can draw them separately, but each will gain only one of the two that are lost by magnesium. So uh, we'll have uh, fluorine, the nucleus is 9p, 10n, remains the same, the first energy level not affected, but the second energy level gains an electron. So initially it was like that, 2, 7, but now it has gained an electron here from magnesium. And because it has gained an electron, so the electrons are more than the protons by one, so we put a negative charge here. Put a negative there. And then because we had two fluorine atoms, we'll also have two fluoride ions. So magnesium ion, ion Mg2+, plus. and this is uh, 2, 8 as the arrangement because it has lost two electrons. Two positive because two electrons have been lost. This is a fluoride ion F negative and these are two eight and there are two of them two fluoride ions And you can say that uh, the compound formed the compound formed is magnesium fluoride, which is MgF2, because we have two fluoride ions combining with one magnesium ion. So the formula is MgF2. We used two fluorine atoms because magnesium is losing two but fluorine can only gain one. Uh, so we can also have another one of formation of magnesium oxide. And this one we can directly go to the to the diagram. So magnesium and oxygen. 12P 
12 n so that is magnesium Two eight two plus oxygen oxygen is eight P eight N we use the dots here so the arrangement is two six because the total number of electrons so oxygen is two six so we say that oxygen atom arrangement is o two six so in this case we are saying that magnesium is uh, losing two electrons and oxygen is gaining two electrons to attain a stable arrangement so the two electrons lost by magnesium will be gained by oxygen. So the diagram after the, that result okay, that diagram will not fit here. It's just uh, is a continuation. Let's have it here. The product so we'll have 12 P 12N for magnesium. So this will be one, two. We usually put the electrons in pairs unless it is one. So that is two eight magnesium after losing two electrons. So after losing two, it acquires two positive charge. Then we have oxygen. Oxygen was uh, 8P8N. The arrangement was 2,6. Now it is 2,8 because it has gained some two electrons here from magnesium. So by gaining, it acquires a charge that is 2 negative. So this is a magnesium ion. Mg, 2 positive. The arrangement is 2,8. Uh, Oxygen forms an oxide ion. So O2 minus like that. And the whole of this compound is what now we are referring to as magnesium oxide. Because it has a magnesium ion and an oxide ion. So the something that uh, is important to note here uh, that uh, uh, for nonmetals, when they form their respective ions, their name changes a bit, and we add an IDE at the end. So for oxygen, we have oxide. For chlorine, we have chloride. For fluorine, we have fluoride. So, but for the metals, the name just remains. Magnesium remains, calcium remains, sodium remains, but for the ions of nonmetals. Ions of nonmetals. These are the ones that we add an IDE at the end. So hence oxide, not oxygen ion, but oxide ion. Not fluorine ion, but fluoride ion.
So uh, the assignment, the first question, using a dot and cross, dot and cross diagram, like the ones we are drawing, show bonding in potassium oxide, calcium chloride. Number two, name the ion formed by phosphorus and hydrogen. So we are going to stop there until the next time. Goodbye. Thank <music> you.